EpoMaker recently got a lot of praise for their affordable keyboards and I also tested quite a few of them that I really liked and actually highly recommended some of them in my videos about the best 75 and 65% form factor keyboards. So I wanted to know what else EpoMaker have to offer and ask them which were their most popular, highest selling keyboards. They've sent over a bunch of very different keyboards and I have to say that some of them are a bit more unique than I expected, I guess. Anyway, so do people just have a weird taste in keyboards? Or are these actually any good? Let's start with a more modest keyboard, the RT100. Now this one has a 96% layout, which keeps the number pad, but is not that much wider than a 75% keyboard for instance, which is quite nice. Now you might have noticed this little screen right here, which is kind of what makes this keyboard unique. And yeah, I had some fun with it. You can upload images or GIFs with the EpoMaker app and also have it showing the CPU load and temperature. But honestly, I wish you could customize it a bit more like changing the layout for instance. But uploading different images or GIFs is basically the only customization option. Now the typing experience on this keyboard is actually very interesting. The first thing you'll notice is that this keyboard is extremely quiet. The version that I have here is equipped with EpoMaker's C-Sort silent switches, which really are very silent. In this configuration, this definitely is one of the quietest keyboards I've ever tested. But you can also choose between a bunch of other switches if silent keyboards aren't your cup of tea. I really like the EpoMaker Flamingos, and with these switches, the RT100 becomes much more vocal. I kind of prefer the sound with the EpoMaker Flamingo switches, and even with these switches, this still is a rather quiet keyboard, as it has a lot of dampening. The typing feel is soft, and even a bit mushy, I have to say. It has a gasket mount and a PC plate with flex cuts. You can feel and see the flex, but this doesn't feel as nice as a more premium gasket mounted keyboard. This retro white and brown colorway is also the only variant that's currently available, so this certainly isn't a keyboard for everyone. I mean, you're probably gonna love this keyboard if silent retro style keyboards are your thing, but I'm actually gonna put it into the B tier. Mainly because this keyboard right here exists and comes in at basically the same price. It's from EpoMaker's subbrand Sidu. It's a 96% keyboard as well and it's available in much more mainstream friendly color variants. And right away it feels like a much more premium keyboard. The almost 500 grams weight difference already is a good indicator of how much more solid this keyboard feels. The knob and this part around the USB port are made from metal and the keycaps of the white version that I have here actually are double shot PBT, which is great to see for a $120 keyboard. The sound signature hits a nice balance between thocky and clacky and probably something many people will enjoy. Of course, the stabilizers could use some tuning, but these actually sound pretty decent for a pre-build and even are PCB mounter steps that are generously looped. I also really like that this keyboard is VR compatible, which makes the configuration process a lot easier and you don't have to install another software utility. Now something not everyone will enjoy is the firm typing feel. It has a very firm mounting style and a solid plate, so there's virtually no flex. I really don't mind a firm typing feel and think the typing experience on this keyboard is quite nice, but you probably won't enjoy it as much if you prefer a softer typing feel. Overall, this is an A-tier keyboard, a really great option if you like the 96% layout. If you prefer a smaller layout, you're probably gonna like this one. It's the EK68, which is a 65% keyboard. At first glimpse, you might mistake this for an aluminum case, but it's not. It's a $90 keyboard, so a metal case would be kind of crazy. But yeah, from a distance, the fake aluminum is actually quite convincing. Less so if you look closely or actually touch the case. I still think it looks quite nice, and overall this keyboard kind of reminds me of the Keychron Q2, which is a real aluminum keyboard. Because just like the Q2, this is a 65% keyboard with a knob, it has south-facing RGB and it's using a gasket mount. And the EK68 even comes with pretty high quality double shot PBT keycaps, which look suspiciously like this $60 set from Echo. That's kind of insane for a sub $100 pre-built. Now the sound signature leans a bit more towards the clacky side, but I quite like how it sounds.
It's using plane mounted stabilizers, but you can clearly see that these were looped and greased. And they actually sound pretty decent. Now the typing experience is pretty soft, which is something that's rather unusual for a keyboard of this price class. And unlike the RT100, this doesn't feel mushy at all. The plate is rather firm, so it's the whole PCB and plate sandwich that's traveling when you press down at it. In combination with the EpoMaker Flamingo Switch, which is a really smooth linear, this makes for a pretty nice typing experience. And I even slightly prefer this over the TH68 and TH66, which both are great keyboards. These are very similar to the EK68 with similar layouts and similar feature sets, and they all cost roughly $90, give or take a few dollars. But the EK68 comes with these nice double shot PBT keycaps, whereas the other two just chip with dice up PBT keycaps. And the TH68 and TH66 both have firm mounting styles, so I feel like the gasket mount of the EK68 just adds this little bit of extra refinement. So I'm gonna put the EK68 into the S tier, and the TH66 and TH68 are going into the A tier. Can't really go wrong with either one, and if you're chasing that foggy sound signature, you might even prefer the TH66. Now this one technically also competes with the other 65% keyboards, but it also kinda doesn't. Like there's no way someone's just gonna buy a cat-shaped keyboard just because it's a decent keyboard. But I guess there's a demand for stuff like this or this wouldn't be one of EpoMaker's best-selling keyboards. So the question really is, do you have to compromise on quality if you want a keyboard that's shaped like a cat? But this is a decent keyboard with some nice Dysa PBT keycaps and EpoMaker Flamingo switches. But it's not as good or refined as the EK68. The Minicat really doesn't sound bad, but it's no competition for the EK68. For some reason, EpoMaker also didn't feel like lubing the stabilizers of the Minicat, which really hurts the sound of the spacebar. This is fairly easy to fix, but something you don't really have to do with the EK68, which by the way comes in at about $90 as well. With the Minicat 64, we're also getting north facing sockets and no fancy gasket mounts. It does have some amount of flex towards the center, which is caused by the PC blade and a somewhat loose mounting style, but it's firm towards the side, which overall makes it feel a bit inconsistent. I'm also not a big fan of the way the case is constructed. It's made from a bunch of layers of acrylic that are just stacked on top of each other without any adhesive between them. So even when just picking up the keyboard, you notice that the layers separate with minimal force. Where the acrylic is thin, like here under the spacebar, it bends pretty easily, which honestly makes this keyboard feel a bit cheap. Now on the plus side, we're getting VIA compatibility, which is extremely rare in this price class. And I also have to admit that the RGB looks pretty nice with the frosted acrylic. But after all, it just has to go into the B tier. Like, sure, if you're really digging the cat aesthetics, this is a decent keyboard. But if you'd also be okay with a more ordinary design, the ones in the S or A tier are just so much better. Now this keyboard right here might look familiar to you. It's the EP84, and even though it's not the newest keyboard anymore, it still is very popular. But to be honest, it really shouldn't be. Don't get me wrong, it's not terrible, but there are just so much better alternatives nowadays. Like, why would you buy an EP84 when you could have the TH80, also from EpoMaker, for just about $15 more? The EP84 was a great keyboard back when it came out, Though budget keyboards have become so much better over the years that the EP84 with its thin ABS keycaps and basic construction just can't compete anymore. So it just has to go into the C tier. It's not that bad that it belongs into the D tier, but at the same time it's just quite far behind the keyboards in the A tier for instance. The TH80 though will go straight into the A tier right next to the TH66 as it's basically the same keyboard with a 75% layout. Now this one is a bit of a unique keyboard. It's the Keyboom Phantom 81, and the standard feature is that basically the whole keyboard is transparent. 
except for the PCB of course and the plate, which is made from what seems to be anodized aluminum. Switches, keycaps and the case are all see-through though, which looks pretty nice. And as you'd expect, this also works great with RGB. This thing basically illuminates your whole desk. Now, as much as I like that they've really leaned into the see-through look, this is also the biggest weakness of this keyboard. These see-through keycaps sure look great, but might be the worst keycaps for typing and gaming I've ever tested. Their surface is just super smooth and slippery, and basically an oil and fingerprint magnet, which, you know, isn't ideal for something like a keycap, which you're gonna touch a lot. Of course, you could just switch out the keycaps, but this not only drives up the cost, but also kind of defeats the point of a keyboard like this. Though the good news is that even with these see-through keycaps, it actually sounds quite nice. PBT keycaps don't change up the sound too much. And the PCB mounted stabilizers are also tuned rather well. Now, I'm a bit on the fence with this keyboard. The case itself is really high quality, like super clear acrylic and precisely machined. And this thing is pretty heavy for a non-metal keyboard. It's also using a silicon gasket mount, which adds some flex. This really would be a nice keyboard if it wasn't for those keycaps. But without see-through keycaps, I think it would lose a lot of what makes it special. So I feel a bit sorry about it, but I'm just gonna have to put it into the B tier. Now, I guess you could say that I've saved the best keyboard for last, because the Sidu V65 V2 is going straight into the S tier. It's a VIA compatible 65% aluminum case gasket mount keyboard that goes for about 130 US fully built. Which, in case you're unfamiliar with keyboard prices, is actually pretty cheap for what it is. And this is a great keyboard. The aluminum case is machined nicely. It seems to be coated rather than anodized, but the surface quality is really good. This is the retro gray version, by the way. Color choices, though, are very limited, as it's only available in this retro gray or white at the moment. Either way, it comes with a nice set of super thick Dysup PBT keycaps. And I also like the stock quark matte switches, at least some of them. I'm probably nitpicking here, but the factory lubing could be a bit more consistent. Anyway, here's how it sounds. Sounds pretty good for a $130 keyboard if you ask me. Though I also wouldn't mind having a bit more thog, especially if you compare it to something super thoggy like the Zoom 65. The stabilizers already are pretty decent out of the box, but the board is also compatible with PCB mounted steps, so you could also replace them with something nicer. You could also experiment with leaving out some of the various poron foams that it comes with. They really didn't cheap out on foam, which is nice to see, but this also causes a somewhat thin sound signature. Now the gaskets are quite thick and appear to be made out of poron as well. In conjunction with the PC plate, there's a good amount of flex, which makes for a soft typing feel. Now there's really not much to complain about with this keyboard. Like sure, PCB mounted steps would have been nice, and I also wouldn't mind having a few more different case colors to choose from. But overall, for its price, this is an amazing keyboard. Really deserves to be in the S tier. Now, here's the full tier list, again in its full glory, in case you want to have another look. Of course, every keyboard is linked in the video description down below. Enough talking, I'm now gonna leave you with a long sound test for all the keyboards. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.